Good morning, brothers and sisters. Moloeni nonke huyemora. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. A special word of welcome to the, all the people from the Peninsula region that is listening to this service this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, precious Jesus, our Savior, wonderful Holy Spirit, our God, Father, three in one. We give you thanks and we give you praise this morning that we are able to gather around your word. Come now and be with us as we worship together. Come now as we gather, Lord, your children, wanting to worship you, to declare your worship, but also to seek strength from you and to seek guidance, O Spirit. Be with us during this time. Bless us. Strengthen us. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Saviour. Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 17, from verse 1 to verse 11. We read from the New Living Translation. The Prayer of Jesus After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed you to the one you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name, so that they will be united just as we are. This is the word of the Lord. So we've listened to our lectionary reading for this morning, which was taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 17. However, in terms of my, my message to you this morning, I'm going to deviate slightly from the lectionary and present to you the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 22. And I'll read from verse 31. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you've repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. This is the word of God. Friends, we are one week away from that glorious celebration of Pentecost. During this time of the year, normally, between Ascension and Pentecost, many of our churches would normally gather ecumenically 
to seek the fullness of the church. It is a time, the season is normally a time where the church gathers to dream about the prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples in John chapter 17 verse 11, that they may be one as he is one with his father. But it's also a time for the church to cry out to the divine spirit of God to revive us again, to empower us and to inspire us in order for us to follow Jesus and to serve him in the world. This morning, however, I want to take you back to a conversation between Jesus and Peter shortly before the arrest and crucifixion of our Lord. Jesus talks to Simon Peter and he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. That, of course, is is taken from Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32. Luke captures this conversation between Jesus and Peter in only four verses. But I think we should look a little bit deeper into this exchange of words between the two. Jesus speaks to him saying, Simon, Simon. Satan has asked, other translations will say, insisted to sift each of you like wheat. The way in which Jesus addresses Peter as Simon, Simon, it's almost as if I hear some deep love and concern for his disciple. Also in the words of Jesus, hear some kind of urgency, even a sense, a touch of anxiety. Remember the name Simon carries some uh, double entendre with it, meaning on the one hand to listen, But also the name Simon also means reed, the reed that is blown by the wind. Jesus wants Simon Peter to listen. But knowing his weakness, he also wants him to realize and to remember that he is Simon the reed and not just Peter the rock. Just like in the case with with Job, Satan had insisted to test the disciples of Jesus. Satan asked to sift them. But it seems as if Peter doesn't even listen to Jesus. He does not hear the warning coming from Jesus. Peter was the one who challenged the laws of gravity when he walked on the water with Jesus. But when the wind started blowing and the waves became bigger, it was the same Peter that sank. But Jesus knows him so well. And Jesus prays that his faith will not fail. Then Jesus says, when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. This sounds strange, friends, eh? That Jesus would say to Peter, when you have have repented again, when you have turned to me again, did Peter not change his life? Did he not go through a process of repentance when he decided to, to follow Jesus? Didn't Jesus call Peter blessed and the rock? There must have been a very special relationship between Jesus and this disciple. Yet Jesus says to them, when you have repented and turned again. In this conversation, Peter doesn't really take time to listen to Jesus. He's too busy with his own agenda. In fact, he doesn't even hear Jesus praying for him. He focuses on other things and misses the opportunity to listen and really turn to Jesus. I also sense that one can be saved and still depend on your own strength. And therefore I need repentance from that. One can also uh, be saved and yet unsaved in your relationship with your fellow brothers and sisters. From that I need repentance. I can love the church so much, but not love the Lord of the church as much as as I love the church. I need to repent from that. You see, friends, brothers, sisters, the church as an institution and us as individual followers of Jesus have to listen and we had to learn throughout history to listen to Jesus more deeply. As individuals and institutional church, we continuously need to repent and turn to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. This current state of lockdown had placed the church in a very extremely vulnerable position. There is great uncertainty and angst among us. Church leaders are struggling with the sense of loss because we are not able to to work. We're not able to do what we're supposed to be doing. We're worrying about what's going to happen post-COVID. How will things change? 
there's a health challenge, a health crisis, but also an, econ an, an enormous economic challenge that is, that is threatening us. It almost feels to me as if Satan again is insisting on sifting the church of Jesus Christ like wheat. But I've simply come by this morning, dear friends, family, brothers and sisters, to tell you that Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is praying for us as he had been praying for us all these years. He's praying that we will stand firm amid this crisis. I also want the church, particularly leaders during this time, to listen more deeply to what the Spirit is saying. Remember the words of Le Leonard Sweet when he says that there comes a time, and the time is now, when church leaders will understand that it's more important to listen deeply less important to shout loudly. Let us listen to what Jesus is saying to us. Let us listen to what the Spirit is saying during this time. Remember the famous text in Revelation of Jesus saying, Yeah, I stand knocking at the door. Remember, in that letter, Jesus is knocking at the door of the church, asking to come in. Perhaps this time of crisis is a time for us to, to repent and turn to Christ and to encourage and strengthen each other. Perhaps this time of lockdown and this season as we're entering Pentecost again is a time for us to hand the church back to Jesus Christ as its Lord. Perhaps this is a time for us to once again embrace our own vulnerability and submit to the will of Jesus. My friends, Jesus is praying for you and he's praying for me. God bless us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear us when we pray this day. Loving Heavenly Father, in Christ you have given us new understanding of you. In Christ you have given us a message for the world. In Christ you have promised us the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, for the nations to whom we are sent to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins. We pray that leaders may repent of the use of oppression and of injustice, of the lack of vision. We pray that they may govern in continual state of repentance, forever turning their minds towards justice, wisdom and compassion, learning anew from past mistakes building afresh on new visions. Lord, we pray for the people of the world to whom you've sent us to preach a word of repentance and forgiveness of sins, that people may repent of the warring spirit of greed exercised at the cost of poorer lands. We pray that they may live in a continual state of repentance, forever turning their minds towards peace cooperation and coexistence, using new discoveries to benefit all peoples, using past failures to find future opportunities. Lord, we pray for our own nation, to whom you have sent us to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins, that we may all repent, Lord, of our materialism. Help us, Lord, to repent of our racial and class prejudice, our apathy, we pray that we may live together in a continual state of repentance, forever turning our minds towards the real need of one another, giving respect to every person, finding new answers from a history that repeats itself. Lord, we pray for the Church that we may fulfill our mission to preach repentance and forgiveness in Christ's name, and that we may be one and bring reconciliation to the whole world. We pray that we may repent of our timidity, our insolitary, our concern for respectability, our divisions between us. We pray that we may serve together in a continual state of repentance, forever turning our minds towards the gospel the world and each other, that we may bring your hope out of despair, salvation to those ignorant of God's love. Lord, we pray that you help us in this difficult time of the coronavirus, 
We pray that you help our scientists to find a cure. We pray, dear Lord, that you protect our people, that you help the health workers. We pray, Almighty God, that you be with all of us. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. May the grace of our G Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with all of us now and forevermore. Amen.